President Tinubu sets out physical policies to tackle economic reality in his speech delivered to the nation. We also will be looking on at the power of right communication on the program this morning. Then we'll be looking also at what made it to the front pages of some of our national dailies on Off the Press. Very good morning to you and thanks for joining us on The Breakfast. My name is Nyam Gul Agaji. We sincerely apologize for the little uh, mix-up there this morning. Our second topic is going to deal with the right communication, the power of the right communication. We will share the charity aspect of it and bring it on a later date. But today it's, it's going to be a very, very busy day, as it were, because uh, we're hearing some good news and some bad news uh, also. Uh, when we talk about traffic every, very early in the morning and very early in the show every day, uh, we hope to bring you some, some news uh, in that sector. And the good news today is that from today, according to the governor of Cross River State, all BRT buses and uh, cars, whether big or small buses, that are operated by the Lego State government will have a price slash of 50%. We saw that happen during the campaigns, and immediately after the campaigns, uh, everything went up. Uh, so places that they were paying, for instance, 200 naira went to maybe 300 naira, some of them 400 naira and all that. But, you know, now everybody began to grumble. that So this thing was just for election, and uh, the people didn't matter after election. Now that they... Um, the fuel subsidy has been removed and people are going through a lot of pain. Uh, the governor has now said, okay, we're going back to uh, what we did. If it was doable during the campaigns, then it's doable even now. And he said that BRT buses will be taking half the price they used to charge. I don't know how far that is going to take us, whether it's going to take us for six months and they will extend it, or it's going to be for life. And I'm asking myself, so what is this called? Is it not subsidy? Um, now, the people who are going to work will be enjoying the slash in price of uh, uh, transportation. What about the people that don't need to go to work, need to trek to somewhere else, but are still finding it difficult because everything has gone up because of the subsidy removal? There are some palliatives that go round, and there are some that go to specific people. Do we need the ones for specific people, or do we need the ones that will go round and everybody will have a feel of it? I'm not saying what the governor did was bad. In fact, I applaud him so much. And I'm just hoping that, as he has promised, that um, there are going to be more buses. The buses will come very uh, rapidly. They will come very fast. We wouldn't have to wait for a month or two before these buses come. More buses... He promised to the workers, the workers in Alausa and everywhere else, they have their buses that take them. But I do hope those buses will come for the workers and for everybody else. And then there will be more routes uh, for these buses to ply. For instance, if there is no bus from uh, Bega, Ojodu Bega to Aja, uh, maybe they should be thinking about buses that will take people from Bega to Aja directly without having to go to Oshodi before they take another bus and all that if it is not existing. So open up more roads for these BRT buses to ply, um, make the time longer so that the buses will have to go earlier and close later. If that is done, then everybody will be happy because in Lagos you need to move very early if you want to beat traffic and everything else. So people who are leaving for work, maybe by 6 or 5.30, will they also enjoy these. Or will they have to wait till maybe 7 o'clock where the BRT buses will leave the, the places that they load from uh, before they go to work and go late to work? There are some essential, in fact, every essential worker uh, has one or two days that they need to go very early to work. If you are a broadcaster, for instance, maybe you have to open this, the mic at uh, 5.30, you open the station at 5.30 and do your rundown and do everything. So you need to go to the office 
earlier than everybody else, or even if you're doing that at 6 o'clock, so you, you need to leave your home maybe at 5 o'clock or a little after 5 o'clock. So will these people be covered? Are there arrangements made so that people who are early risers can also benefit from this? And then some people um, go to work and come back very late. Maybe their shift is such that they will close later than the normal, uh, normal 4.30 or 5 or 6 o'clock as the case may be. Will they still have buses to come home? Because if these buses will not cover this category of people, then a lot of people will be left out uh, of this largesse, I, I might like to call it, of the state government. So let's uh, uh, just make sure that we dot all the I's and cross the T's and make sure everybody is enjoying from uh, this uh, impressive policy that the governor has brought. You know, the democracy is about the people. And if the governor or the government has seen that people are complaining because they really are suffering, then they should look into how they are suffering and who is suffering and why they are suffering and see how they can address all that. So buses come, good. More routes asked for. A uh, longer time, also, I've also asked for that, and a lot of people uh, will be of the same opinion. Let it be longer, and then let there be more routes uh, to carry the people uh, and go to work. For if I'm coming to work very early, let me be able to have a bus to jump on as well, so that I don't get to pay somewhere that people used to pay 300. I keep saying this, 300 from uh, Judo Bega to... Uh, Victoria Island is now 1,000 Naira. So it is not 600 Naira, which will be double. It is not even 900 Naira, which will be triple. There is still something else. So more than 300% increment of whatever they have been paying or we've been paying. So it's a laudable thing. Let the governor uh, do even more than that. Thank you, Mr. Governor, for doing that. But uh, we have some things that... Um, uh, are top trending. Uh, first of all, a uh, helicopter crashed into a residential area in Lagos yesterday. Uh, if you go to Obakran, Obakran area, there was a crash. And you, the videos are everywhere uh, that you can see. The exact moment was captured on CCTV. A, a yet-to-be-identified helicopter, as it is, as, as at the time of this report, uh, it crashed into a building in Ikeja, uh, and uh, the aircraft burst into flames near the Murtala Mohammed International Airport. Uh, its destination was Murtala Mohammed International Airport, but it didn't make it there. Or maybe we do not know because, uh, thank God, all the four passengers we've been told uh, survived. Whether they are going to survive beyond today or uh, and come back to normal life is another case. But we thank God for small mercies. They survived and. In fact, when that helicopter crashed, a lot of people didn't believe anybody can come out of that. But hey, God is God. You're seeing the video there and how it happened. God is God. God is no man. So if people could survive from there, then what is sub fuel subsidy removal that you cannot uh, survive? Two people believed to be the pilots of the helicopter were rescued. It is not clear how many passengers, even though the news going around is that there were four passengers or four people on the plane, the pilots and some other passengers were there. If there were more, we are going to find out today. But the, the, the aircraft seemed really small, so maybe it was just four. But thank God that they survived. Emergency operatives from the National Emergency Management Agency were on ground to do what they are supposed to do, and we applaud them as well. And not only them, there are some volunteers that were trying to uh, put out the fire. There were people who were trying to rescue those who may be in the rubble or the, the crash or the, the burning flame and all that. And we really commend their efforts. They're still good Nigerians. We have our backs. We also uh, hope that this cooperation, this good heart, will also continue to uh, make sure that we don't do jung jungle justice <laughs> also. Instead of doing jungle justice that might turn out to be a false alarm that was just raised, then let us just always join hands to, if we catch a criminal, for instance, take them to the authorities. And uh, if we find something like this, let's not just wait for the authorities to come and say, okay, fire service needs to come. Uh, 
uh, last mile needs to come, last semi needs to come and all that. We do our bit and make sure our uh, country is better than it is today. Now, the second trending topic is that the court grants MFLA's request to serve bail order on DSS. Now, this story is that Justice Nicholas Oweibo of the Federal High Court sitting in Lagos on Monday granted the suspended Central Bank of Nigeria CBN Governor Godwin Emefiele leave to serve the Director General of the Department of State Services DSS, Mr. Yusuf Magaji Bichi, by substituted means. The court order admitting him to bail and directing him or uh, his remand in the custody of the Nigerian Correctional Service. That's what the story is. And Justice Oweibo granted the order following an ex parte application moved by MFLS counsel Mrs. Ogonaya Sonuga. The court in July, uh, on July 25th granted MFLA a 50 million naira bill and ordered that he should be remanded at the NCS, that's Nigerian Correctional Services, after he was arraigned on two counts of illegal possession of firearms and ammunition. The charges bordered on alleged possession of a single barrel shotgun as well as possession of 123 rounds of live ammunition without a license. However, DSS rearrested MFLA on the court premises shortly after he was granted bail. We've seen this happening so many times. Somebody given bail and rearrested the same day and I cannot even start to reel out the names because they are long. In a 15-paragraph affidavit in support of the uh, ex parte application dated July 28 and deposed to by Adeogun Ayodele Samuel from the law firm of Victor Quara, uh, he stated that the court on July 25th ordered that the defendant should be remanded at the Nigeria Correctional Service pending the perfection of the defendant's bail. Okay, the order was expressly for them to uh, remind him and the, at the NCS. And, you know, remember that fight between NCS and DSS? Okay, the, the, the pon, um, they stated that despite the order granting bail to the defendant on the 25th of July 2023, the Department of State Services, that is the DSS, rearrested and whisked the defendant or applicant away from the premises of the court. And he stated further that by the actions exhibited by the DSS on July 25, 2023, it was or it will be practically impossible to serve the DSS personally. And that's the reason why they are serving by other means that they call substituted means. Uh, so whatever it is, the DSS will have these uh, um, this thing served them by other means. I don't know whether they're going to use the newspapers or they're going to use courier service or whatever they're going to use, but substituted means are allowed and they're going to be served this. We do hope that this administration will um, do everything within its power to respect the rule of law because a country without the rule of law is, well, a lot of people will use the word a failed country but uh, I just believe that Nigeria can be better than it is now. But let's start by respecting every sector of our national life. First of all, there must be law. And the law depends on what the Constitution says. And if we respect the law, respect the Constitution, a lot of things will move, in, uh, move into place. That's what we want, people to respect the law and respect themselves as well. So it's only in Nigeria that when we see somebody resigning because of some things that have been discovered about them, we look at it like, oh, does this ever happen? Or some people resigning because they think they are not fit enough for that office uh, because uh, they have tried and they have failed. And they just honorably say, okay, we're not doing anymore. Or they find something that is not in tandem with the ethics that they have and they resign. And it is something really, really surprising to us. In Nigeria, a lot of things are very surprising to us. Somebody sees someone else's money and returns their money, and it is a surprise to us because 99% of the people may just keep that money for themselves. You know, things like this, small things that matter, we should pay attention to them. Well, we are going to take a short break, see whether it is, uh, there is something for us from the weather a room, or if there is not, we'll just take that break, and when we return, we'll go to the press and see what we can lift 
of the press. Stay with us.